Notes of Truth with Julie Carrick here on Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and uh, we've got Notes of Truth with Julie Carrick. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Oh, I wish that people could see what we're um, going to talk about on the radio this morning. <laughs> I know. I know. So we're going to be highlighting an incredible artist, Cindy Carstens. She's, yes. from what you mentioned, she's a devout Catholic and so much more. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and jump in and kind of tell us about Cindy Carsten. Yeah, Cindy, uh, I met Cindy in 1998. So quite a few years ago when I first moved down to uh, Scottsdale. And she has just this incredible art. And so many times people associate when you say artist and I'm talking to them, they think music. But Cindy's art is that very physical, her medium is paint. Um, she's uh, on canvas. Um, her, her paintings, her, the way that she approaches her artwork is absolutely phenomenal. Um, one of the pieces that she did is called A Heart Pierced by the Nail of Our Sins. And <clears throat> what was kind of interesting about it is that she had, she had wanted to paint the face of Christ on a, a style of art where you stain the canvas, like you stain it with these very, very rich, deep colors, and then you pull off some of that very thick paint, and then you do a light color that's going to be the main image on top of it. So that kind of sets it up what it will look like. <clears throat> and she had stained the canvas. She was ready to, she had started pulling off of the, the, the canvas, this very deep, deep colors, and was going to use like this cream color to, to do that face of, of Christ crucified. And when she stepped back, she already saw his face in the painting. Like it was amazing. And, and my husband and I, when we were at her gallery, we purchased that painting. And it's, it's something that we had in our home for many, many years until we donated to our church. And it now hangs in the vestry in the sacristy so that when the priests are getting ready for mass they and, and the altar servers, as they put on their vestments, they see this image of Christ and realizing that they're about to enter into this beautiful sacrifice of the mass. That gives you an idea of one of her paintings. I mean, it's just, it's phenomenal. And then a few years ago, she journeyed with her mom who was dealing with Alzheimer's and to see someone slowly losing their memories, slowly losing their connection with people as close as, you know, initially it was the, you know, people that were part of daily life. And then it was the grandchildren. And then it was Cindy herself, where her mother didn't even know who she was. And to look at something as difficult as Alzheimer's, and to try to bring a to try to bring a focus to it and and share her heart she did this painting of her mom and they were raised on a farm in Kansas they Cindy grew up in Kansas before she had moved to Arizona and the way that she painted her mother in this image so she's got this beautiful barn scene in the background of the painting and then her mother was very much in the front center of the painting and she had barbed wire because of the um, the farm. There was, of course, barbed wire as part of that fencing. But she also had the barbed wire kind of going across the face of her mom in that somehow you're not even allowed with this illness, with this disease to speak to people because little by little you're forgetting everything. And when I looked at that image of her mom, I, I wept. I mean, the image of Christ suffering the image of her mother suffering. Um, and yet there was a beauty in both of these paintings that stirred you to want to look at them, to just spend time looking at them. Um, I don't know if you have any, you know, favorite artists. Um, I, I'm curious, do you, is, is there anyone that's kind of a favorite of yours, Keith? <sighs> you know, it's tough. I do like the kind of the classical artists. I have a book that shows like all liturgical artwork that I, I don't know. I, I don't really have a specific favorite that I can call to mind, but mm -hmm. um, usually it's kind of the classical ones. Yeah. 
Yeah. I love the way that the classical artists have been able to depict those scenes. You know, mm -hmm. we think of Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. um, we think of that incredible image of the Pieta that, you know, where Mary is holding Christ as he's taken down from, from the cross. And I think of the way that that has influenced even some of the music that I've written. Mm. One of the one of the pieces in particular, the Pieta, there's a church in Oklahoma and the way that they're the way that the church is set up and you see the sanctuary as you walk in right in the front where it belongs. <laughs> um, the tabernacle where it belongs, you know, that's one of my pet peeves when I go into churches and it's like, where's Jesus? You know, you're trying to find the tabernacle. Um, but in this particular church, their adoration chapel is off to the left and there's a glass wall so that you can see into the adoration chapel, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so when you walk in, there's the adoration chapel and right behind the monstrance on the altar of the adoration chapel is a, a very large image. It's not quite life size, but very large image of the Pieta. And so here you are looking through this incredible monstrance, the body of Christ, and then you're seeing Mary holding him. Mm. And the expression on her face in that image is just heart stirring. Mm. And I remember looking at that image one day when I was there doing a, a parish mission, and it struck me that in her face, we typically see um, different things. And I'll, I'll ask people in, in the parish mission or concert setting, I'll say, what do you see in Mary's face? And you hear those typical words like sadness, mm -hmm. um, you know, just all of those different emotions that she's that she's got. And I always ask, does anyone see the word expectation or the, the, the image of expectation? Do you see that in her face, expectation? Mm -hmm. And there's kind of that little questioning look on their faces. And then I remind them that as Mary journeyed through this darkest day of her life, watching her son walk down that road of Calvary, carry the cross, be scourged, all of these horrific things that happened, mm -hmm. her mind must have gone back to when he had said, I'm going to suffer and die. And he said it multiple times, I'm going to die. I mean, talk about adversity. Mm -hmm. um, but as a mother, she also must have held on to that phrase, but on the third day, I will rise. Mm -hmm. On the third day, I will make all things new. And so as a mom, I mean, I've raised three beautiful adults from childhood. I know that in the times of adversity in my children's life, I go back to those happy moments or those things that would give me some sense of looking forward. What's going to come out of this? And you know that Mary must have thought as she's looking into him, you said on the third day you'd rise. Let's get to the third day because, son, I'm taking you at your word. Mm. And just looking at that image that day um, gave me that little bump I needed to say, write this song, I take you at your word in that Eucharistic mm. life. And when I look at Cindy's paintings, when I look at her artwork, um, it, it evokes that similar that similar emotion that we have in her sacred pieces. Um, like I said, the one, a heart pierced. And if you could see in my living room here, um, two of the pieces that she's done that we have the privilege of owning, um, one of them is called um, Hearts Entwined. And the Hearts Entwined, I was working on a project years ago called Lend Me Your Heart. And I knew Cindy would be the right person to paint the cover. Um, one of the things that I can't stand is my face on a on a record. <laughs> like I just, you know, I don't like being photographed, and it's very weird to be in a public person and can't stand being photographed. <laughs> but, um, but when when I talked to Cindy and I said, "What would you come up with for an, um, you know, something to?" to draw people to the heart of Mary, because we're asking Mary to lend us her heart, mm -hmm. to take us into the heart of Jesus Christ, the sacred heart of Jesus. And so she took about, gosh, about a month. And then little by little, she began to reveal the painting. And when we consider the sacred heart, 
It's the heart of Jesus with the thorns around it. And then that cross in the top. When we look at that image of the immaculate heart of Mary, it's a crown of flowers that go around the heart and then the sword that goes through it because of that word of Simeon, a sword of sorrow will pierce your heart. Mm. And what she did is she overlaid the two hearts to where it looked almost like one. And on half of the heart, you see the floral. On the other half, you see very strongly depicted the crown of thorns and the cross out the top. And so she brought this to me and she said, I hope you like it because it is finished. And I was amazed at this image. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. And she said, I know that the sword is missing, but I did not, I could not bring myself to put that sword back into Mary's heart because she's had enough pain. Mm. <laughs> it was amazing. Like yeah. it, it's an amazing piece. So if you have my uh, project, Lend Me Your Heart, the front cover of that CD um, is that piece of art. It, it's it's. And that's Cindy. I mean, that's just Cindy, the way that she um, paints. Um, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's amazing. So, yeah. Is. is there a piece of art other that you like? That's a, you know, what's, what's your favorite piece to look at during Lent? Wow, what's my favorite piece of artwork to look at Lent? Oh, that's, that's such a, that's a interesting question. Um, I would say right now, uh, my daughter has, she loves the paint and she just, got paint and just smudged on like this piece of paper and it has i don't know if she chose this on purpose but it's all kind of like brownish kind of purplish hues a little bit and like it just looks really well i don't know she doesn't know much about colors but somehow she figured it out and so it doesn't look <laughs> like anything but um it kind of fits that season of lent almost um so i'd say yeah that would probably be my, uh, <laughs> my go-to for lent right now but um there's um, there's there's a lot um yeah, so many beautiful pieces of artwork. And same with Cindy. Uh, I was looking on her website, which you can go to cindycarstens.com. Cindy is spelled C-Y-N-D-Y. And I, I didn't think you could capture an Arizona sunset on, on painting, but somehow she has done that. Uh, just incredibly work, incredible work just based on her website. So Thank you so much, Julie, uh, for bringing that to our attention, cindycarstens.com. You can also find Julie Carrick on Voicing Our Faith. It's a weekly program every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central. Thank you so much, Julie. It's always a pleasure to have you on, on our, uh, our Notes of Truth with Julie Carrick. But stay tuned. We'll see you on the other side of this break. There's still more to come. So stay tuned, and we'll see you right quick. This has been Morning Joy, where truth matters. Hosted by Keith Downey. Take some joy with you today. Visit grnonline.com slash joy to listen again. Share a segment or answer the question of the day. That's grnonline.com slash joy.